The film opens by showing this beautiful girl who is a prehistoric human from 65,000 years ago. Because she was wearing too little, she had to find a hatched dinosaur egg to sleep on. What she didn't expect was that as the other small dinosaurs hatched one by one, the mother dinosaur claimed the girl as her own. Every day, the mother dinosaur would bring her new foods to eat. Her life was one of happiness and stability. But Bella isn't really willing to live alongside dinosaurs. She was living in a primitive tribe around a dozen days ago. The Nija tribe's leader desired to perform a ritual in honor of the gods. It was thought that by performing this ceremony, they would be able to ask the gods for a larger crop of food tomorrow. Then Bella and two other girls were picked as the sacrifices because of their better physical appearance. The ceremony was about to begin. One of the girls was so ashamed that she ran away midway. However, she ran in the incorrect way, falling off a cliff and dying. The clan's chief was furious because one of the sacrifices had gone missing. He instantly instructed his subordinates to tear off the two females' cloaks. The patriarchs declared on the spot that the rite had begun early. The ceremony site suddenly blew a gale, blowing the tribal members in all directions and forcing them to flee to the ground to avoid the wind. The gale even blew some slow reactors off cliffs. When the girl spotted the guards fleeing, Bella plunged into the sea, crested the breeze, and swam deep. It is said that girls with large breasts have generally good luck. Bella had hardly swum a few kilometers when she came across a fishing boat belonging to another tribe. When Captain Jack spotted the girl in the seawater, he thought she was a mermaid. He threw a net across and rescued Bella. He then led Bella back to the group. The tribe members had never seen a female with blonde hair before, so they all gathered to observe. They discussed Bella's blonde hair and the sun tattoo on her forehead. On the other hand, the tribe's leader discovered that all of his offerings were gone, but the hour for sacrifice was approaching. He snatched the entire tribe's female creatures. He wanted to select another sacrifice. However, the number of persons required for the annual sacrifice was exceedingly great. The remaining girls were out of shape. Initially, the patriarchs thought God had no appetite. The patriarch had no choice but to analyze Bella's escape path. Then he gathered his warriors and started out to recapture Bella. This is a primordial tribe that has existed for 65,000 years. Its members are friendly, simple, and fearless. They had just caught a 7 to 8 meter long dinosaur alive for tonight's dinner. They did not expect the dinosaur to break free from the rope and roar and pounce on the crowd as a result of their irresponsibility. People lighted a campfire to scare the dinosaur. What they didn't expect was the dinosaur to rush straight to the campfire. Finally, they emptied all of the stock oil on the ground, ready to wait for the dinosaur to run over and ignite the gasoline. Flames erupted up on the dinosaur. The tremendous temperature quickly melted the dinosaur's skin, allowing him to feel the heat of the fire. The stench of meat has spread around the beach as the dinosaur hisses, screams, and struggles in the center of the fire. The dinosaur's struggle weakened gradually, and tribal members eagerly raced forward to dismantle it. The tribe eventually made it to dinner. The tribe members were happy to sing and dance. Only the freshly arriving Bella was shunned by the audience, she could only be alone on the beach. Jack, on the other hand, rushed over to Bella with food and began conversing with her. He also wanted to give her the bone necklace, so their friendship grew very intimate. Every day after hunting, Jack will bring her fresh food. He didn't anticipate the fans of Jack's tribe to follow him in secret. When Anna saw this scene, she sought out the other tribal girls to accuse Bella for stealing Jack's belongings. The tribe reacted angrily. Anna duped a few people into joining her to bully Bella. Anna drew her dagger and planned to murder her boyfriend. Finally, Jack arrived and explained everything to everyone. Finally, Anna had to submit and accept her error, but she despised Bella even more. The head of another tribe arrived with a hunting squad. Anna instantly took the patriarch to his destination. Bella fled. The patriarch led the tiny group after Bella. Bella dashed across the mountains to a more lonely location. She finally made it to Triceratops neighborhood. Bella had little chance against the Triceratops, which weighed several tons and was as big as a tank. Finally, the Patriarch was the Triceratops' highest flyer, flying more over 10 meters before becoming unconscious. When Jack returned from hunting to figure out what had happened, he immediately led a group of people to the mountain to look for individuals. However, he did not find Bella, but rather a severely injured dad. 
Jack immediately arranged for the crew to return the patriarchs to the tribe. To his surprise, the Triceratops reappeared and murdered one of the members. Jack didn't want to watch any more of his people perish, so he took the initiative and shouted to get the Triceratops' attention. The infuriated Triceratops continued to charge at Jack's ass. Jack unexpectedly stopped a corner at a vital moment. Triceratops then plummeted off the cliff due to the inertia of will. After returning, Jack organized a funeral for the deceased team members. Just while everyone was mourning their companions, Anna took a torch and lit up the hut Bella had made with considerable difficulty. Jack, moved by the image, couldn't help but race into the primeval forest alone, determined to find Bella. Meanwhile, Bella struggles through the bush, looking for a way out. Suddenly, she comes across a gecko larger than a tiger. He retreats out of fear. She accidentally falls into the trap of a man-eating flower. Bella battled for a long time before she could simply escape. However, she discovered that the man-eaters had bitten her hair. Fortunately, she brought the dagger that Jack had given her. She successfully hacked off her hair and escaped. Bella was fatigued after running all day and night. The frigid wind at night was quite cold. With nowhere else to go, she had to find a developing dinosaur egg to sleep on, but she had no idea that when she awoke, all the other small dinosaurs had hatched, and the mother dinosaur had adopted Bella as her child. Since then, Bella has led a wonderful life with the dinosaurs. Jack searched all night and only discovered a strand of Bella's blonde hair. He believed she had been consumed by the man-eating flowers. Jack was terribly depressed and returned to the tribe. Soon after, the two tribes joined to survive, and everyone went hunting together. However, Jack was captured by a pterodactyl because he was distracted. A pterodactyl seized Jack and threw him back into its lair. The pterodactyl intended to feed the man as sustenance for the baby. However, the man's vitality is so strong that even in the pterosaur's domain, he continues to hold the spear and struggle. Finally, the dragon's wings were cut off accidentally. The pterodactyl quickly lost the air edge it needed to compete with the man. Finally, Jack pushed the pterodactyl from the cliff. Then Jack dashed down the mountain with a spear, killing the pterosaur entirely. Just then the dinosaur hissed again in the distance, and Jack looked over with caution. In the afternoon he noticed Bella was playing with the dinosaur. Jack believed Bella was being pursued and ran over. They were eventually reunited. Bella also informed Jack about his experience. Unexpectedly, a hunting team from another tribe noticed the sight and quietly informed the patriarch. Bella and Jack were ecstatic about the sport. The next morning, Jack simply covered his back and got up. He stated he was going back to explain to Bella why the clan chief should no longer perform the ceremony and Jack would then take her back to life. He didn't anticipate Jack to be apprehended by the matriarch right before his homecoming. The matriarch prodded Jack for information on Bella. Jack would not say anything. So the matriarch tied Jack to a blazing raft and threw him into the sea to become the next sacrifice. Unfortunately, Jack was not drowned, allowing him to flee back and rejoin Bella. It was horrible to witness her beloved tortured into Bella because of her. She quickly took out small fish to prepare a charcoal grilled live fish for Jack. Unexpectedly, the white smoke from the barbecue served as the best mark. The patriarch arrived while the fish had not yet been finished. No, they can only ascend the cliff wall. They hoped to use the terrain to avoid the pursuit. However, the patriarch remained at the highest position, gazing down on them. They tossed and turned for half a day but could not avoid the fate of death. The mother dinosaur appeared just in time. It growled, charged across, and dispersed the throng. Bella was taken away by the mother dinosaur. The unfortunate Jack was abandoned. When the dinosaur mother abandoned him, the chief returned him to the clan and chained him up. The patriarch stated that he intended to kill him in order to re-sacrifice. A tsunami hit the island unexpectedly. A swarm of crabs the size of a car emerged on the beach. The crabs were eating people all over the place. The crowd shrieked and scattered, but nobody helped Jack untie the rope. The pivotal moment. Bella sprinted over. She released Jack's rope and led him to the raft on the beach. The sea was so turbulent that the patriarch decided to let the water flow backward. However, it didn't take long for him to be swallowed by the massive waves. Jack and several other people were fortunate to be washed to another island by the seas. They have since had a lovely life on this island. So what did you think of this movie? 
leave it in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you in the next video.